So first of all, I'm here with Michelle, and you want to give us a little bit of background about yourself, please, what your job is with the Department of Natural Resources? Oh, sure. I'm with the, uh, yeah, with DNR. I'm with the Natural Heritage Division, and I'm a field biologist. Um, I'm a stewardship specialist, so I work with biologists to get um, stewardship done out on the ground. Okay. And today we've been out at a site in Mason County looking for the Regal Fritillary. Can you tell us a little bit about the Regal Fritillary, please? Sure, the regal fritillary is state threatened in Illinois, and um, the main reason for that is loss of habitat uh, throughout Illinois. It typically occurs in sandy, um, it's a prairie, a prairie species, and uh, so loss of habitat in prairies being destroyed, and then also degradation of existing prairies, um, even some of the state-owned prairies because just not being able to burn them frequently enough. So what we're trying to do is uh, on the, the state-owned areas where we know we have regal fritillaries, we're trying to enhance the habitat for them and restore the habitat for them by removal of woody species and, and other methods to um, open up, open up the, the um, herbaceous species for foraging and for the larvae. Okay, so what, tell us a little bit about the life cycle of the regal fritillary. Right, so, um, so around, so I guess I'll start with the, the larvae, the larvae um, overwinter um, in that stage. And in the spring, when the, um, they feed on uh, violets, so they, they prefer like um, bird's foot violet and prairie violets, but they'll also eat, um, and here in Mason County, a lot of times we find on, them on Johnny Jump Ups. And so they eat the, they eat the violets exclusively and then uh, they'll pupate and come out as adults. They'll metamorphose oh, about beginning of June. And um, so then they're out June, July, they're mating. Um, and then the males tend to die late summer and the females kind of hang around for a while until they lay their eggs. And they'll lay their eggs near violets, not necessarily on them. Sometimes it's on tufts of grass or um, and you, we don't usually see them much past September. We might see them around into later September, but then that's usually, they only lay one um, group of eggs a year. They don't have multiple generations, just one generation a year. And, um, and then the eggs hatch and they overwinter again as caterpillars. How about uh, identification of a male versus a female? Are you able to differentiate the sexes? So you can differentiate the sexes. So we're out here today trying to establish um, an idea about the population that's here and how is it that you actually un undertake um, surveying for the Regal Fritillary? So in some places they do very formal surveys where they'll have a certain number of um, people and they'll walk transects at the same time across a field so that way you know that you're getting good coverage of the field. Um, the survey that we did today is more informal. We just walk around, try to cover the whole area, and then count the butterflies as we either flush them or see them feeding. So uh, for here, you're just trying to get a relative assessment of is the population increasing or decreasing? You're yes. not really counting numbers of individuals. Yes, that's right. Okay. And because the, a lot of the restoration work we've been doing has been relatively recent, we're trying to see how they're responding in some of those areas. And often we see a good response because they tend to kind of like disturbance and you'll see some of the flowering early successional plants, some of the milkweeds and other species move, you know, uh, occur in those areas where we've had brush cleared. And then we see often see the real fritillaries using those areas. So you talked about disturbance um, enhancing the habitat for the regal fritillary. What types of disturbance are you actually doing on the landscape? So it's interesting with prairie that it's actually a, a, a natural community that evolved with disturbance and the main being fire. Um, so periodic fire that keeps down woody vegetation. I mean, you would have some woody vegetation here and there, but in general, you're not going to want a complete canopy or it, you'll, the shade will be too much for prairie vegetation. 
Um, in areas where we haven't had frequent enough fire, we have to um, augment that with removal of woody species. And so sometimes that's just hand cutting, um, you know, the chainsaw or a brush cutter and coming in and hand cutting and then treating the stumps with herbicide. Or sometimes it's so, there's just so much work to be done that we go through with a forestry mower. And so that's a mulching mower. It, it cuts down the trees and mulches them up and, um, you know, re really with this purpose of just getting sunlight back to the ground. Um, so what we're doing here and um, really at most of our prairies and even in the savannas is um, using those methods together to remove the vegetation and then fire to keep the um, to keep the prairie healthy, you know, by killing the woody vegetation or setting it back, but also it enhances the conditions for the um, herbaceous plants as well. Uh, my name is Eric Smith. I'm a natural heritage biologist with Illinois Department of Natural Resources, Division of Natural Heritage. I have been doing so since 1996. Okay. And my job is to manage uh, high quality natural areas and manage for threatened and endangered species from Kankakee to here where we are in Mason County, all the way over to Danville, which covers approximately, I don't know, six, seven, eight, ten. 12 counties I don't wow. really, really remember anymore. Wow. A <laughs> lot, of, lot of work to cover, but what a great job that yeah, you got. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we're here on the Regal Fritillary Survey Day um, in Mason County, and um, what can you tell us about how the Regal Fritillary work has been funded? Funding uh, for this project has been twofold. Uh, partially, the funding has been through the State Wildlife Grant, uh, states have received state wildlife grant funding since approximately 2001 uh, when the feds were given uh, each state a portion of this large pool of money based upon the population size. Illinois receives approximately $2 million every year from the state wildlife grants. And there has always been a portion of that that has gone to state-owned sites, high-quality sites. Um, and sometimes that's $250,000 a year, sometimes it's $370,000. Um, but it's always been a small portion or if some private uh, uh, or if some public university all of a sudden decides they can't spend the money, they'll say, uh, could you roll it into the public lands? And we've done public land, state wildlife grants for prairies and forests um, uh, and, and different uh, types of habitats. And this one happened to be part of the grassland habitat state wildlife grant. And so we have partially funded it through that. Uh, a lot of the follow-up work after the initial work was funded through state wildlife grant uh, one of the things we had to do was come up with match state match it, it originally started as 50 50 match and now it's 65 35 and that match has primarily come through natural areas acquisition fund uh, which is one eighth of one percent of the real estate transfer tax which goes to uh, the restoration uh, and the funding of that high quality natural areas in the state acquisition uh, my salary a salary for most for most of the people within within the division of natural heritage today i'm with joe kath he's an endangered species expert with the illinois department of natural resources joe you want to give us just a little bit of background about yourself please sure. uh, my name is joe kath i am the endangered species program manager with dnr's division of natural heritage I've been with the division uh, going on 27 years. I can't believe that the uh, time's passed that quickly, but um, I help uh, direct um, all of the endangered species activities within the division, working closely with our staff here in Springfield, as well as our field staff throughout the state. Well, thank you, Joe. I recently had the opportunity to go out with some of the field staff to um, experience a Regal Fritillary survey, which was really fascinating. Yes. Um, but from your aspect, um, you have a lot of information now on what's going on at the federal level. Yes. So if you could give us some background information about that, please. Sure. Um, you know, part of my job uh, as the endangered species coordinator for the department is I work and coordinate very closely with the Fish and Wildlife Service uh, concerning species that are native to the Midwest, species that are native to Illinois, that may warrant even further protection under the Federal Endangered Species Act. 
Um, so obviously we have the State Endangered Species Act, but if things are even more dire, the Fish and Wildlife Service becomes involved and they then make the decision whether something should be protected also at the federal level. So as far as the regal fritillary goes, the Fish and Wildlife Service was petitioned by a conservation organization back in 2013 to consider listing, formally listing, the regal fritillary as either endangered or threatened under the Federal Endangered Species Act. In 2015, the service made the decision that yes, indeed, the species did require some further analysis, further investigation to help them make that decision. Um, so essentially, we're expecting in fiscal year 2022 for the service to release their official decision. They, will, they have two choices. They will either make a formal statement that no, based upon their analysis, the regal fritillary does not warrant further protection under the Federal Endangered Species Act, or due to their analysis that yes, indeed, it does warrant protection as either federally endangered or federally threatened. Um, so to help the Fish and Wildlife Service make that formal decision, they conduct what's known as a species status assessment, um, or the acronym for that is SSA. And an SSA essentially is a risk assessment that's used by biologists at the federal level to help them use the best available science to make decisions whether species actually do warrant protection under the Federal Endangered Species Act. So we are expecting, and when I say we, um, all of the states within the range of the Regal Fritillary, we're expecting a draft SSA report this summer, summer 2021, to be released from the Fish and Wildlife Service. In that SSA, their draft SSA, it will make a recommendation that, yes, the species does indeed warrant protection under the Federal Endangered Species Act, and they will say it warrants protection at either the endangered level, the threatened level, and it will, if it does warrant protection, the Fish and Wildlife Service will also propose designated critical habitat areas for that species. Um, some of those critical habitat areas may be in Illinois. We don't know until that draft report is released. The draft SSA, on the other hand, may say that due to our analysis, we have determined, we the Fish and Wildlife Service, using species experts, state biologists, have determined that no, the species is stable at this point and it does not warrant protection under the Federal Endangered Species Act. If that is the case, that has no bearing though whatsoever on the state's status or protection of that species. So even if the federal government decides no, it doesn't warrant protection under the Federal Act, it will still remain protected under the state's Endangered Species Act and receive all of the protection afforded to it um, both, you know, as a species, protection of its habitat, all of the things like that. Our biologists, our staff will still continue to work essentially towards recovery of that species here in Illinois.